Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to another podcast demo. In this demo, I'm going to showcase and talk a little bit about podcast 3 natively integrate Azure functions. Let's get started. As you probably know, and you have some experience with Quarkus Pro, so since the very beginning of the day of the Quarkus community, Quarkus offered Azure function extensions for developers to write deployed cloud enabled microservices with various endpoints such as REST is reactive and undertow and reactive routes and funky HTTP on Azure function one time. And then that journey didn't end, but we just arrived in a new era of the Quark 3. A new Azure function class is a you want to write with the CDI beans, like a context dependency injection with the arc beans, are uh, automatically integrated Quarkus, which means when developer wanted to write some code for Azure functions using inject annotation with the Quarkus, the Quarkus will be automatically bootstrapped in the end. Developer can also select the function's right cycle scope, such as application and the request, just like a normal Java beans. So you might have one question if I just talk a little bit about Quark 3, the native Azure function. So here's the question uh, I'm just expecting. What is the difference between Quark Spunky and the Azure function is? And why do I need to use the new Azure function with Quark rather than Quark Spunky? So here's the answer. The Quark Spunky can be only invoked by HTTP triggers at this moment. However, Azure function has various different types of events uh, which can be invoked such as HTTP trigger and the grab triggers and then Cosmo DB trigger. And there are more many uh, triggers so uh, Azure function provide uh, for triggering and binding uh, capability. In the end, the developer have a more flexibility to implement your function application or Azure function, which allows you can uh, invoke that function by many different Azure services on top of the cloud. And one more thing, Quarks Funky was designed for the lowest common denominator uh, to be portable and simple function layer across multiple service platforms such as not only Azure Function, but also for AWS Lambda, Google Cloud Function, and the Kubernetes KNM, etc. Okay, let's get right into demo, how it works, how to develop new uh, Azure Function on top of the Quarkus. So I'm going to use Quarkus CLI as always, and I'm going to try to add a new extension, like a Quarkus-Azure Functions. It automatically generates a bunch of files, uh, for example, Maven Project, and then uh, Maven Wrapper, and the configuration, Docker file, etc. Let me try to change my directory, open the working folder. So today I'm going to try the cloud IDE. Sometimes you don't have enough time to install a bunch of the tool, for example, the Java, Maven, etc. The cloud IDE, which is a good option for you, just get started day one. So here is my Quarks project, like a Quarks Azure function. It's a project name. When you go to Palm XML, you can take a look at that, uh, the which version you're going to use right now. So when I created this demo, we just write for, for release Quark 3. That's why you can see the CR2 version I'm going to use for this demo. And when you scroll down a little bit, you can find uh, it's already installed your Maven dependency. We can say Quarkus extension. The so Quarkus Azure function, which allows me to uh, run my application locally and deploy my application Azure function. And the Quark CDI injection capability and also Azure function uh, Java library uh, going to be used for packaging application. So here's the Azure Function Maven plugin, which allows the packaging application as well. And you can say the configuration for a uh, function name and the resource group on Azure Cloud and then your uh, service plan. And then here's the one interesting thing you need to understand. You may be already using the uh, more than Java 11 version, like a higher version, like a 17, 19, etc. But at this moment, uh, Quarkus and Azure Function integration only support uh, Java 11. At and also, we're going to use Azure Function Core to the race version, uh, version 4. So you're going to install locally uh, when you deploy this application. OK, let's go to uh, generate sample application, which is a function Java file. As you can see, it's a very simple. The so function name, this is a super interesting part. If you have some experience to develop Quarks Funky to deploy your application to Azure Function previously, you just need to use your phone annotation, which allows your function method uh, more make it portable and then not only as a function to another serverless platform. However, when you go to just Azure function implementation as an example, 
Pixar and the blog post, they already ask you, you need to use your function name annotation, which he pick your method and the class as an edge function. We're going to do the same way, but we automatically uh, start as a bootstrap server as a forecast runtime for the your function application. So first of all, we're going to add, we already add as a function name uh, method uh, annotation. And then we're going to use the trigger HTTP trigger. You can change that, uh, like a custom DB trigger, a bunch of the other uh, trigger and by the edge of function provide. We have a one interesting part. We're going to add the new content is body context using CGI injection, which is already specified in this example with the Quarkus CDI injection. As long as we're going to use this Quarkus injection in your function, automatically Quarkus runtime bootstrap in the end, which is a really convenient way for developers. Let's take a look at that, uh, how to implement a uh, greeting service. It's a pretty simple, just a return, like a hello world. Let me try to change that a uh, more uh, pretty proper way. So welcome to edge a function with the purpose with your name, with a parameter in the URL param. Then back to the my function name. And then let me try to function name like a greeting, just like a service name. And then once you change that, you're gonna ask the endpoint, already start with the API and slash your function name. In this case, I just change it to my function name greeting, which means I'm gonna need to access my endpoint API slash the end. So how to run my application to the local test? Well, experience Quarkus, so you're probably expecting, okay, I'm gonna run Quarkus demo, which will give me a live coding capability, which is just super awesome. However, as an integration with this kind of stuff, you cannot use a Quarkus live coding capability at this moment. So that's why you're going to use your Maven packaging tool and then add a function, Maven plugin with the run. It literally simulated your function capability on your local machine. So this is another cool feature in Quarkus 3. So we have a bunch of steps to packaging jar and then just simulate local environment. Now you can see that your endpoint with the 7071 port and then API slash your endpoint like a query. And then I'm going to try to run using call command. The Daniel and the localhost API greeting and just welcome to edge of function with the Quarkus and Daniel. And then when you go back to actual runtime row, you can find the which trigger you just invoke your function. As you can see, the HTTP trigger just process the function. It's really happening in the Azure cloud in the production environment. Okay, so before I deploy this function to my Azure cloud, which is Azure function apps, I need to log in Azure cloud for my local to the cloud using uh, Azure command line, Azure login, and then you're gonna uh, select which account. I'm not showing my uh, super password. Okay, so here's my Azure portal. You can see a function apps, I'm just refresh, and make sure nothing in there, and I'm gonna deploy a new function using same Azure Maven plugin. I'm gonna use a column deploy. It's pretty simple. And then it's the same a packaging job file, which is a fast start on Quarkus, and then uh, deploy this application to file uh, within task unit case and once I see I'm gonna deploy this application. If you take a look at the logs in the runtime you can find here's interesting just starting creating function name I uh, just created and then the your function name should be unique that's why there's a random uh, rattling just attended at the your function name. And then you're gonna be star in the soon is it the moment it depends on the, how big your application function is. Now we got to deploy and then HTTP trigger URL here, and then the URL is automatically generate your the Azure Cloud route URL. I'm just copy uh, this URL uh, when you uh, test by by application. Then back to the Azure portal. Now we can have a new function here. So when you select the function name, you can find the detail page here. For example, there are a bunch of information. As an example, URL. And then here's the interesting, the Azure monitor actually observe your metric data. Let me try to invoke with a new parameter like a Daniel on Azure Cloud and then the new URL in actual Azure Cloud. And now you can see, welcome to Azure function with the purpose, Daniel on Azure Cloud. So this is a literary function. So if you don't have any incoming natural traffic in this function, that function will be hibernated. Uh, just like an idle mode. And then you invoke that function and again, it automatically starts just based on call to start strategy. It takes us a couple of seconds to start up. But in this case, I just invoke that 
endpoint right after deploying my function. That's why you can see immediately the find out return code. Welcome to Azure function with the Park Daniel on Azure Cloud. You go back to the function app. There are utilization of memory for free and a number of accounts of a function. It, it takes some time to get all information. And then you can involve several times. It will uh, put together and scrap all information in your monitor, which is really helpful for a developer to figure out, okay, how many resources are you actually using for this function invocation in the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for watching this video again. And uh, please let me know if you have any question. I'm more than happy to address. And uh, thanks all. Have a good rest of all.